Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Grumman Pilot's YouTube channel. And today we're going to talk about autopilot. You either have one or you don't. If you do, you're going to be a happy camper because an autopilot, cut to the chase here, it's a great workload reducing device to have in your airplane. I mean, half of my 6,000 plus flight hours were flown behind George, doing long cross countries for hours and the autopilot was doing all the work. So we're going to talk a little bit about an autopilot today. We're going to show you some pictures of an autopilot. The ones that you're being seen right now are from Century One, but we're going to look at putting one in your airplane. And if you don't have one, then pick one you like and have it installed. If you already have one, can you reuse any of your components? Probably not, but let's stay tuned and talk about autopilots in detail. So we would like to ask you, please subscribe hit the like button, and hit the notify to stay current with our content. The only thing missing from all of this to put it in an airplane are the two brackets and the harness. These units um, used to be fairly cheap. You used to be able to buy a used Century One about $900 on eBay, uh, $700 from a private buyer. Uh, but with S-Tech, you know, twelve, fifteen thousand for their autopilots, somebody at Century said, eh, so you can still buy these new. They're about $8,900 now, and a good used one's worth about $3,000 or more. So that's the basic of the autopilot. It really eases your workload on VFR and IFR flights, reducing your workload, allowing you to take both hands off the yoke, especially if your airplane's out of rig. Aircraft and rig will fly straight for a while, not in turbulence. So your autopilot system consists of two major components. You have the control head, which either goes in the panel or in the radio stack for controlling the servos, and then you have at least one servo for the ailerons, and you'll have one servo in a new elevator system for the um, for the elevators. And what that gives you is pitch and roll control. And here we are looking at some of the servos. Now, these are not out of a Grumman. These are out of a Cessna and a Beechcraft. But as you can see, we're not used to having a servo in the tail of our aircraft. But that doesn't mean anything because it can be added. And then here's a picture of the Grumman installation for the Trio Autopilot. Not referring, not recommending a Trio Autopilot, but that's a darn clean installation for both roll and pitch. So you get two axes, no trouble. And then you have the control head fits right into an instrument hole, blends in nicely with the panel. Stand by. So the beauty of that is, is you have an instrument hole that is your autopilot and it gives you everything you need. And, it, and here's a close up of the panel. So you have everything on there you need to control your airplane. And the nice thing about the new autopilots is that they're almost like having a flight director. It, you can set how fast you're going to climb, how fast you're going to descend, and it follows your course. So an autopilot, again, is a good workload reducer. Get one in your airplane. Pick a model you like, find a shop to have it installed, and enjoy putting those hours in your logbook. Ladies and gentlemen, we hope you found all this useful and informative. Thanks so much for watching Grumman Pilot's YouTube channel, and have a great day flying your Grumman. And in addition, there's a little treat. About 3 o'clock in the morning when I'm doing web work and other stuff, here's my cat coming down, playing with a mouse and meowing and just having a good time with me in the wee hours of the night. So I thought I'd throw this into you as a little treat. Y'all, please enjoy.